you can do this when you're an American citizen now. <laughs> <laughs> Try me, sir. <laughs> Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Good morning. Good morning. It's, uh, I miss you all. There's a lot of new faces here, but uh, a lot that I recognize from before. Or should I say, good morning, beautiful America. That's right. <laughs> you know, there's a lot that has changed since I've been here with you guys. A lot of good has happened. I, about, I want to say maybe four months ago, and going to six months ago, I re-signed from a position that I think most of you guys could probably relate here if I say this statement. I gave up a position that basically was paying me doctor money without a doctor's degree. Coming from where I come from, to be able to be accomplishing that at my age, I'm a millennial, thank you very much, <laughs> and, an, and an American citizen, thank you very much. <laughs> you know, I, I gave up the position because as I look at my life and as I took inventory, my wife goes, hey, the paychecks are great, but you are not home. And I thought, well, if my wife wants me home, I better be home. In the process of me transitioning from that position to where I'm at now is something re really, really special happened. I started preparing for my citizenship interview. Now, the interview is actually pretty nerve-wracking. It could give you some anxiety, even if you didn't have anxiety before. Uh, the reason being is because it's, there's a test that you have to pass. And if you don't pass that test, guess what? You are not getting a piece of paper that says you are an American citizen. Well, it's been a year-long process, so you submit your application. They want to make sure that you are not a criminal, that you are not, you know, haven't committed any felonies. Thank God my mama spanked me many times when I was little, so that was nothing to worry about. As I was in the process of studying, there's a hundred questions that you have to study. Now, growing up, you know, obviously I've shared some of this with you guys. I, I didn't necessarily like school. So the only way I could learn was through a video. So wh who do I go to? YouTube. <laughs> Look, I told you, I'm a millennial. And I'm an American citizen now, so I could do that. <laughs> so I went onto YouTube, and there was somebody there that had the 100 questions. There's 100 questions, civic questions, that you have to study. You only have to, they will only ask you 10, and you only have to pass six. So I'm like, man, I better get all of them, because I can't take no chances of getting six wrong and only four right. So I studied for the, for the test. And what I started finding out in the process of learning, I guess, your rights as an American citizen was, I started thinking about people like Martin Luther King. And I thought, man, like this guy didn't fight for something. He just woke up one morning and said, I'm just going to create something new. He was actually fighting for something that was already, and you can say the contract, but nobody was paying attention to. And he said, well, what about this line right here? We should, be fine. we should be fighting for those civil rights. It's in here, guys. Is anybody not paying attention? No, I'm serious. It's, it's in here. I promise you guys. Obviously, it cost them his life, but it, it paid the freedom of many, many people. So in the process of that, I was really convicted. I was convicted of, man, I, I don't think I've been making enough difference in my community as I should be. So I went to the, uh, I went to the interview, and it's about a... 45-story building downtown, and I just bought a truck. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> so I, I bought a truck, and, and I thought, man, I should take the truck because I thought we were going to park in a parking ramp. No, there's no parking downtown. So I'm trying to park this big old truck. It's a 19 Ram, fifth generation, black appearance. It's super nice. I highly recommend that you buy it. So I'm, I'm downtown, right? I'm downtown, and I start getting butterflies in my stomach. Now, I'm a little afraid of heights, so imagine have, being already nervous, and then you have to climb. I, I was in the 14th floor. So I climb to the, you know, we take the elevator to the 14th floor with my wife, just my wife and I, and you go through security and everything like that. It's pretty intense. You go through security, and then I look out the window, and <laughs> I realize I'm 14 stories high. So I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom. This is, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to pass my test. So I sit back down, and I'm still studying my, my questions on the, on the YouTube video, just preparing myself and what, wanting to make sure that I'm really, really prepared. So they finally call my name, Julio. So I go in the back of this room. It's just like, it's smaller than 
probably this area here, and I sit with my attorney, and he starts asking me questions. And you know, they start asking you questions like your birth date. But I'm so nervous, it's like I can't even remember my own birth date. <laughs> so I'm looking at my attorney, my attorney's looking at me like, what do you want me to say? It's, <laughs> it's your birthday. So I, I, I continue to answer, I know, it, 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 was, it was quite the, story, uh, quite the experience. So I answer the questions, and uh, he goes, I'm going to ask you the civic questions now. So I said, okay. So I close my eyes to concentrate. And he's giving me the, the questions. And on uh, the sixth month, I answer, answered them all right. So he's like, hey, you, you've passed your test. Congratulations. You'll be receiving a letter in the mail in the next two weeks. You'll have your ceremony. Well, in the process, when we were there waiting for me to go into my interview, there was a ceremony, ceremony going on already. So there was, I want to say, maybe five to ten people that went into this other room and they came out in five to 10 minutes. So I told my wife, this is gonna be easy. We're gonna drive out there, it's gonna be five, 10 minutes. No, not really. It was an event. It was downtown Minneapolis next to the Excel Center. There was 1,500 people getting their citizenship that morning. I had no idea. It took me an hour just to check in. It was amazing. So as I sat down, there was 32 countries there. Five, like I said, 1,500 people were actually getting their citizenship. So I basically landed in the middle of the room. I mean, 1,500 people was just American citizens that were getting their certificate. That's not families included. So there was probably close to 2,000, 2,500 people there. And I'm in the middle of this venue. And as I sit there, I was convicted, guys, again. I was convicted with gratitude. I was grateful. It was like a movie that flashed before my eyes since the day I was born until up, to, up, up until that point. And I got emotional because I thought not everybody gets this opportunity. As you may know, I mean, I'm sure most of you guys have a TV in here. There's plenty of news on the TV nowadays. Not everybody has that opportunity. So I was really, really grateful. The cool thing that the judge did is he made every country stand up. So he'd say, people from Mexico, and you'd stand up. People from China, and then they stand up. And then at the end, he was actually being funny. He goes, I don't think, I, am I forgetting something? And then people um, from Somali go, Somali. There was 112 of them. And they all shouted. And I shouted right with them. I'm like, oh man, this is amazing. I want to be from Somali today. <laughs> Rick uh, visited me not too long ago, and uh, I shared with him the story. And he wanted me to come in and share it with you guys. I didn't come in late because I'm a late kind of person. He wanted me to come in late, and I'm like, why are you making this so intense? He's like, I want you to share the story with the people. So if I can leave you with something here this morning is that I am convicted from now on to understand that there is a responsibility as an American citizen. And it's not just to get a certificate and to say, I quote, unquote, I'm one of you guys now. I have a responsibility to make an impact in my community. I have a responsibility to read the Bill of Rights and understand that there are things going on in this world that no one's paying attention to. What about this sentence right here? I don't know exactly when that'll be. I don't know exactly how that'll happen. I don't plan to lose my life for it. But I do plan to make an impact in some way, somehow. So Rick asked me the other day, he said, how do you think that's going to happen? And I kind of gave him a glimpse of my vision moving forward. And he said, that's positively scary. And I said, positively scary? How many of you guys remember I did a speech on hate? Hate has a negative context, right? Well, I actually used it in a positive context. So I said, wait a minute. Scary is like negative, right? That's scary. Nobody wants to be scared in the spirit of Halloween today. But everybody wants to be positive. So I hope that you stay close to my life as I hope to stay close to yours. Maybe come and visit you guys more. But look out for Julio Molina, AKA Mr. Positively Scary. Thank you. <laughs>